following statement, we have at room temperature or 20 degrees Celsius, a 0.5 millimeter gap exists between the ends of the rods as shown in the image. At a later time when the temperature has reached 140 degrees Celsius, determine A, the normal stress in the aluminum rod, and B, the change in length of the aluminum rod. So here you can see we have rod A, which is made of aluminum. We have the cross-sectional area given, the modulus of elasticity, as well as the coefficient of thermal expansion, which is 23 times 10 to negative 6 millimeter per millimeter degree Celsius. Now you could think of this kind of like strain in this case, right? It's kind of a weird unit but you'll get used to using this. And we have rod B, which is stainless steel. We have the cross-sectional area and the modulus of elasticity as well as, this, as well as the coefficient of thermal expansion. Now you see here, we have T1, the original temperature being 20 degrees Celsius, and T2, as the problem statement gives us, it goes up to 140 degrees Celsius. Now, Part A of this is asking us for the stress in the aluminum rod, and part B is asking us the change in length of the aluminum rod as well. So as you can see, this problem is kind of similar to what we previously were solving for statically indeterminate. You have uh, two restraints here, or two walls, and in this case, they're going to both thermally expand, and there's only a 0.5 millimeter gap. Now, if they expand further than this, then each of these are going to feel a, a force is going to be developed, and that's when we're, we're going to be able to solve for the thermal stress at B as well as the deformation for the aluminum rod. So first things first, let's go ahead and use the equation that we had for the deformation due to thermal expansion. The deformation due to the temperature is equal to, in this case, is going to be a thermal expansion of the aluminum rod, right? So in this case, we're actually going to consider both of the expansions and then compare it to the gap to see if they will in fact make contact and then there's going to be a force produced due to that or a reaction at either ends. So first is the thermal expansion due to the aluminum rod which is the coefficient times the original length times that temperature difference. But there's also the other rod so you have to add the other deformation. So coefficient of thermal expansion for the stainless steel, length of the stainless steel times the temperature difference. So just plugging in and solving for the def total deformation, we get 1.347 millimeters. This is the total deformation. Now when it comes to the temperature difference, it's always T2, final take away initial. So T2 minus T1, as well as once you solve and cancel out for the units, you're left with millimeters or the deformation due to the thermal expansion. So it's 1.347 millimeters. Now one thing to keep in mind is we do have the gap of 0.5 millimeters. So the second Second part to this is actually solving for how much force is developed within these materials due to making contact. So keep in mind we do have that gap. You can see it as the deformation to be able to solve for the force developed within the material is equal to that deformation caused by a thermal expansion minus the gap, in this case point five millimeters is not going to contribute to this force that's being caused. So this is equal to 0.847 millimeters. Now this is the deformation that's all actually going to contribute to the force being developed within the rods because from the original lengths to the 0.5 millimeters, there's a gap. So as far as long as they're expanding and they're still within this gap, then no force is going to be developed within those rods. However, once it exceeds the 0.5 millimeters, then all this deformation is basically going to contribute to the force that's produced within the rods. Because keep in mind, once it exceeds 0.5 millimeters, physically, they cannot expand further. So any additional 
um, expansion that they would otherwise be expanding to without that constraint, they would actually develop that force. So hopefully it didn't get a little bit too confusing, but hopefully I got my point across here. Um, it, it could be a little bit harder to visualize, but essentially, just like when we had that statically indeterminate problems previously, we actually release the constraint and see how much total deformation there would be. And then we would solve for a force that would push it back to the constraint or the wall to see how much force is needed to deform it back to where it physically cannot expand further than that. So that's the deformation that should be caused due to that force to bring it back to the constraint or where these two make contact and that deformation point eight four seven millimeters is the total deformation to bring them back to where they would be otherwise be making contact so now that deformation caused by that force that's produced due to them making contact is equal to that force p times l the aluminum rod modulus of elasticity of the aluminum cross-sectional area plus that deformation of the stainless steel Again, that same force, the modulus of elasticity of stainless steel, cross-sectional stainless steel. And of course, it is equal to 0.847. Now here, you plug in for the values, you can factor out P and then solve for that force that's produced due to these um, rods making contact due to the thermal expansion. So now factoring out that load or that force being produced and plugging in all the values, um, one thing is I converted to kilonewtons per meter squared or kilopascals here, converted the cross-sectional areas as well into meters. Um, and remember this is all equal to 0.847 millimeters or 0.847 times 10 to negative three meters to keep it consistent. And then solving for P, that load that's being produced due to the thermal expansions and the rods making contact is. So we get 232.4 kilonewtons is the force that's being produced um, within the materials themselves due to them making contact and wanting to expand further, but they're, they're restrained physically. So now with this force, you're actually able to solve for the stress developed within the aluminum rod, which is equal to that force divided by the cross-sectional area, which gives us 116.2 megapascals is the stress developed within the aluminum rod. And the actual deformation of the aluminum rod is equal to the expansion due to that change in temperature right um, this would be the thermal expansion but keep in mind since it is being restrained there's actually a force being produced since it's making contact with another rod you have to subtract the deformation um, that would cause it back to that would cause the rod to go back to the location where it makes contact with the rod right in this case this deformation alone is assuming that there's nothing in the way in this case there is another rod actually pushing it back so in this case the force produced that we saw before would be p times l of the aluminum e aluminum and the cross-sectional so as a thermal expansion minus <clears throat> the deformation being caused by this um, load being developed, which was get, which would give us the actual deformation of the aluminum rod in this given system. 0.363 millimeters is the actual deformation of the aluminum rod. That means the rest of the deformation due to that 0.5 millimeter gap would be due to the steel rod. And this is how you solve these kinds of problems when you, it deals with thermal expansion. In this particular case, it was a little bit more confusing and kind of hard to visualize how exactly the system would behave with the expansion and at what point would they make contact. And these are all the steps for it. It could be a little bit confusing, but the more you practice these, the more intuitive they get, um, the easier it is to identify these relationships that we were using and so forth. But generally speaking, that thermal expansion um, equation is pretty straightforward to use, which is the, just the coefficient of the thermal expansion, the original length of the rod or the material times the change in temperature. And that gives you only the deformation due to thermal expansion. And keep in mind, 
in this case, they were constrained at a certain point. That means stresses were developed due to the thermal expansion, which um, we call them thermal stresses. Their stresses developed due to the thermal expansion.